And on this episode of Adam's Corner, we are very fortunate to be joined by Mr. John D. Hancock, who was the original director of Jaws 2 before a, uh, a certain event took place that resulted in him being discharged from the production, unfortunately. Um, so we wanted to get his story, his side of the story on what happened on Jaws 2. And I figured there's no better person to tell that story than Mr. Hancock himself. And he fortunately agreed to come on the show and tell us exactly what happened about uh Jaws 2 and all of that. Before we get started, just want to say that he also is the director of two uh, films that hold a, lot, a, a huge place in many film buffs' heart from the 70s, uh, Let's Scare Jessica to Death from 1971 and Bang the Drum Slowly. Both of those are uh, films that a lot of us have a, uh, a strong fondness for. So we want to thank you for your work on those two films but uh anyway we'll get past all of that and we'll let you go ahead and tell the story about jaws 2 and what happened and how you well i guess first how you got involved with it and then what happened after um dick zanuck hired me zanuck uh produced uh, a whole bunch of wonderful pictures and we became friends he'd like that I, I did a short about a uh, businessman that played touch football in Central Park that was nominated for an Academy Award, and he loved that. And he was very fond of Let's Scare Jessica to Death. So really on the basis of those two things, uh, he wanted me to do the Jaws sequel. Um, and I hesitated to do it. Uh, because it was a sequel and uh, I had other projects that I was trying to get on, but I wasn't uh, moving them forward uh, like I wanted. I mean, they weren't getting funded. So I thought, well, it'll make a lot of money and maybe will set me up for, you know, being able to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I agreed to do it a, in a very foolish moment. It wasn't clear at that point uh, what a, a great genius Steve Spielberg was, or I wouldn't have uh, tried to follow in those footsteps. Um, but uh, I've always had a kind of uh, courage and dumb go ahead. And so I, I plunged into doing it and I, I really got into uh, the violence of it and uh, the scariness of it and worked very hard on the script, my wife. Um, and I wrote the script together. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, what really happened was that I, I ran afoul of uh, a long time struggle between Dick Zanuck and Sid Scheinberg. They had gotten uh, at cross purposes in terms of each was married to an actress. <clears throat> and on the first Jaws, each had promised the role of Roy Scheider's wife to their, their wife. And each said to the other, I think my wife will leave me if I don't deliver this role. Uh, <laughs> And the guy with the money won, Sid Scheinberg, and Zanuck's wife left him. And not immediately, but, you know, within a decent period of years. Um, that had been further exacerbated by the overages on the first picture, which tripled its shooting schedule and budget. And there was a lot of shouting on, well, can't you uh, control him? Well, he's your guy, Sid. You know, there was a lot of bad blood between Zanuck and Scheinberg. Um, so I was Zanuck's choice. But then Scheinberg was very happy with the script. So uh, for a while, Dorothy and I were his pets. Uh, the Scheinbergs had us to dinner and explained how important it was that his wife, Lorraine, go out on the boat in the sequel that to rescue the kids that she, you know, was not on the boat on the first picture, but wanted to be on the boat in the second picture. Mm -hmm. 
So Dorothy and I said, fine, sure, if that's what you want. I mean, it, it was kind of a feminist point, and we kind of thought, well, why not? So the following Monday, we told Zanuck that this is what they, they, Sid wanted in the rewrite, and he said, over my dead body. <laughs> so had I had more experience on how to operate in a bureaucracy, I would have known what to do. But I didn't, and I didn't. Uh, obviously, what I needed to do was get the two guys in the room together and say, okay, you're giving me conflicting instructions. What do you want? Now, Zanuck would have been very angry at me for requesting that meeting, but I think he would have forgiven me. Instead, what happened was we turned in the next draft without Lorraine on the boat and Sid never met my eyes in the commissary again. So that was not a good thing. The situation was further complicated by Verna Fields, who was at that point probably the best editor on the West Coast. And she had done such a good job on the first Jaws that um, she actually thought she should have been hired to direct the sequel. Uh, again, Zanuck, Over My Dead Body. I don't know why he didn't want her, but he didn't. Um, mm -hmm. And she became a vice president at Universal, who was in charge of uh, making sure that things were properly edited before they were released and that kind of thing. And she was very friendly with Dorothy and me, but behind our backs was operating to get the job. Um, she would look at dailies back in Studio City and... Um, say, I don't see how this is going to cut. I'm sure John knows, has a way of cutting it, but but I don't really see how. So if the best editor on the West Coast is saying she doesn't see it's, how it's going to cut, uh, it shook the confidence of further of Sid Scheinberg mm -hmm. and the executives at Universal who were looking at the dailies. And it became an issue. There was, uh, I had crossed the line inadvertently in, in one shot and... Uh, it became an, an issue that, gee, he doesn't know how to cover a scene. Well, clearly I did. I mean, I'd, I had done several pictures where people were always looking the right way uh, in close-ups. Uh, so, uh, and I had a solution for it. Uh, I needed to shoot an insert where a piece of rope went around a, a cleat that would have enabled me to use that footage. But at any rate, they don't want you to shoot inserts on a big picture. They want to do those in post when mm -hmm. you're certain you need them, right? Um, so though, then I, I, I fired an actress in a small part and replaced her with somebody not so good. So I made, I made enough mistakes that uh, combined with the, the power struggle between the guys at the top and Verna's maneuvering. Uh, the day came when a Learjet landed on Martha's Vineyard, and the next day I was fired and on my way to Rome to lick my wounds. So um, it was a huge crushing thing in my life. I mean, uh, I, I can talk about it kind of calmly and ironically now, but it was a big deal. Uh, I mean, I had worked very hard. I mean, I and spent almost a year on it, working, you know, getting the script. And mm -hmm. I mean, our contribution to this, the script was gigantic, you know. So um, there is a book called Hancock on Hancock by Michael Doyle. And it's the whole story is covered in great detail, detail in that if, if anyone really wants to get into the nitty gritty. And I'm, I'm, quite indiscreet so it's, it's fun it's fun to read <laughs> well i'll have to seek that out i wasn't even yeah. aware of that one so i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna you've, you've given me an idea for some reading material <laughs> yeah. yeah um i i can imagine how how hard that must have been because it's an entire year of your life that could have been spent with something uh, some other project that actually did come to fruition and then you've you've spent all of that time 
uh, you know, for something that just really came to nothing. And I, I can't. Well, it also that. just, it, it, I mean, it, it raised questions about it. Was I any good? Could I do action? I mean, it, it, uh, uh, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to do it is I, I, I had gotten from back that I'm slowly kind of, I felt typed as, uh, as warm and human. And I didn't feel warm and human. Uh, I, I wanted to, you know, do violent action. And it was a chance to do that. So, uh, and I felt entirely equipped to do it, you know. Um, so yeah, it raised questions about me. I mean, I, I immediately uh, did another picture, but uh, I mean, it didn't kill my career, but uh, mm -hmm. it uh, it was a, a big setback, you know. Oh, well, I'm sure. Uh, you know, even if if not professionally, then personally, it would be a setback because, like you said, uh, it's it, it's it's tough uh, on on both ends of the spectrum. So I can I can imagine uh, what what an ordeal that would have been it did do one thing <clears throat> for me personally which is it made me think um this is not the kind of picture that i went into this business to do and perhaps i had no business even as a as a you know being smart business-wise i had no business uh agreeing to do it and that I needed to get back to the kind of things that I wanted to do. So <clears throat> Dorothy and I took a second mortgage on our house and and uh, took a year or so or more to research and write a picture called Weeds about a prison drama group in San Quentin mm -hmm. that uh, eventually got on with Nick Nolte as the lead uh, and picture I'm very proud of. But that was more the kind of thing that I wanted to do. Uh, you know, they say do one for them and then one for yourself, one for them and one for yourself. And that was what was in the back of my head when I agreed to do Jaws too. Yeah, because if you'd been able to uh, stay on the production and it had done yeah. well, then you would have been able to have the freedom to get financing for whatever you wanted to do. Yeah. Well, there was no way it could not have done well. I well, mean, that's it was, true. Yes, right. I mean, it, was, it w would have been impossible to ruin it. Uh, I had quite a different vision of, of uh, visually of the island, and uh, some people say that became an issue, but I don't. It really didn't. I mean, I, what I saw uh, was that Amity Island needed to be uh, in kind of post-traumatic uh, condition. That it uh, it needed to have suffered economically from the first shark shark attack. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sheriff needed to be haunted by that and that uh, buildings were we had buildings boarded up and and we went for a much I mean the first Jaws was shot in kind of American technicolor look I mean you know bright colors and cheeriness and yes and uh, we we were working in the for the sequel with a much bluer desaturated look uh, kind of a much grimmer classier look i felt mm -hmm. um and uh everybody thought that was a good idea um until they didn't and uh yeah right yeah it's uh yeah well now were the actors pretty much in solidarity with you i mean were you ha you weren't having any trouble with any of the actors i i assume no. other than other than the casting that we talked about earlier <laughs> um no, the, the, yeah, the, I, I wasn't having any trouble with any of the actors. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, Roy Scheider, I've heard subsequently that he did not want to do it, did not want to do the picture. Mm -hmm. But that was not the impression that I got. He, he seemed to be there. We're doing his best. and uh, I mean, I, I think he actually came to a physical blows with my successor. Yes, that is correct. Uh, but uh, I mean, he he could be cranky, but I, I we got along. I, I got along very much with uh, Sid's wife Lorraine too. I liked her. I still we're still mm -hmm. friends on Facebook. I mean, 
the problem was Sid and Verna, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they they obviously wielded wielded a lot of power at that point at Universal, obviously. So uh, yeah, yes, that's yeah. just kind of the way the the pecking order, as it were, I, mean, I guess. I had got the impression that Zanuck and Brown fought very hard for me and lost, but I mean that was mm -hmm. that's what Dick told me. At any rate, I, I remained friends with Dick and David both. So we didn't work together again, but we would have lunches and things. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it, it's interesting that some of the uh, the script that uh, you, that uh, Dorothy had written for the, the when the, well the the script that you guys two put together, uh, some of that makes it into the novelization, which I think is kind yeah. of uh, um, I, I guess you can smile a, a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, sure. knowing that some of your work is there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but what a does I mean, yes, I've been smiling is there's just there's some smiling, but it's mostly not. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. I, I guess the I guess you could what I meant to say was you, you could take some measure of yeah. pleasure, I guess, yeah, in the fact right. that, that that not all of your work was completely jettisoned and forgotten that there's a, that there are well, elements. Also they, I mean they 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 used it in a kind of uh, screwed up form, you know. I mean, uh, I was very proud of that the that there's a water skiing uh, yes. thing, and I was I, I I mean that's that wasn't Dorothy, that was me entirely mm -hmm. writing. So, uh, and I had two water skiers, and it was really really exciting, uh, and I felt that they screwed that up, and. The way the Dorothy and I went, they sent us down to Acapulco to uh, try to devise an ending and also to learn how to uh, to freshen up our our scuba diving skill mm -hmm. so that I could shoot underwater. Um, and we sat on a balcony overlooking the bay there and listed the ways that we could kill the shark and ended up by electric, you know, deciding to electrocute it. So. I mean, uh, a lot of, I would have done it differently. I would have done it, I think, more spectacularly than they did. But, I mean, they kept, they, they did keep, uh, they kept what we did, you know. Mm -hmm. Just botched it a little. Also, yeah. the, 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 the huge mistake they made was firing Ricky Schroeder, who I'm, I'm unhappy with him politically now, but boy, what a... <laughs> What a fabulous little actor he was. He was so full emotionally and really brilliant and charming. And the picture needed that. They needed that kind of uh, jeopardy to some, somebody really alive and enduring. And uh, they, they flattened that out with the casting. You know, for, for just, it was, I felt an act of cruelty. It was like the new broom sweeps clean. And uh, you know, anybody that, I would. I had hired and was crazy about. Tended to be canned. So. Yeah, it seems like they were just doing that uh, out of retaliation or, or, or yeah. something. It's, it's, it seems it seems real petty when you think so, about. Yes, yeah, self defeating on their part. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh. Well, I I know at the time that uh, teenage comedies and movies involving teenagers were a a fad. At the time, so the end product of Jaws two resembles a meshing of, you know, the original Jaws with the teen, yeah, type movie, right. yeah, and that's. Yeah. Uh, well, Dorothy had a knack for that. She was able to do those teen, the teen dialogue real. Uh huh. Like, she was good at that. Yeah. And. Uh, but they just. Uh, You know, you 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 replace jetliner with seven forty seven, and you 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 make small alterations in a script that uh, make it your own mm -hmm. in a kind of evil way. Right. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, it's uh, well. I'm just glad that some of your work survives in the novelization. That it's not like I yeah. said uh, that it's that people can actually, and if there's anybody listening or watching this, uh, you can uh, seek it out. Seek out the novelization of Jaws too, which is quite quite different from the finished film, and you will get a sense of your of of um, Mr. Hancock's yeah. work. Uh, yeah. There. What are all these DVDs behind you here? Oh, I uh, do. Uh, I uh, review physical media. Uh, I do a podcast once a month where I cover all the latest releases. And so those are, uh, <laughs> that's my library of, I have a carefully curated library of films because I'm a big uh, movie buff and I appreciate the, uh, the artistry and the, and the artists who, uh, gave us this work and, uh, like yourself. And what, so, what do you do with the ones that you no longer want? <laughs> I usually just pass them on to people who may have an interest in them. Uh, my son is a physical media collector as well, so he he he's usually a a willing um, recipient of <laughs> anything that I don't want. But but yeah, I just, I just uh, purged uh, my library the last couple <laughs> weeks. Yeah, I am. I am really. Um, you know, excited about what's going on. I mean, I know we're definitely in the last phase of physical media, but there's still a lot of great films that are coming out on 4K and Blu-ray that are, uh, the 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 quality is, you know, better than we've ever seen before. And so that that's generally what I'm doing um, is curating a library of films in the best possible quality. I just, I, I know a lot of, there are some people who are, into the retro thing where they collect VHS tapes. And I just don't understand any of that. I, 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 I want things in the best possible quality. That I see you've got a couple of VHS. Oh, no, those are books. They've, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I have some reference books. So yeah. if I'm doing an interview and there's something uh, yeah. uh, that I need to confirm that I can't uh, get a quick uh, confirmation online, I'll just grab yeah. a book and I'll say, let me check that. So I've got to, I, I also, on my podcast, I do occasionally, um, uh music related podcasts uh and so i always have access to billboard charts in case there are, <coughs> are <laughs> that and, and because those are things that uh, they're behind a paywall so i've actually got the charts there so if i need them i can just grab them <laughs> oh, that's good yeah. <laughs> so yeah but physical media is uh, and and they did a great uh blu-ray of um let's scare jessica to death a couple of years ago i believe you did, did a yeah. commentary on that yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get one out on on weeds. You know, what happened when Dino De Laurentiis, uh, his company, went belly up is they lost the negative. Oh, wow. So that there has never been a DVD or a Blu-ray uh, of that. So we're trying to track down who owns it now. And it's I've, I've spent more than I should on New York lawyers trying mm -hmm. to determine ownership. But, it you know, it sold to... Canal Blue sold it to Royal, or sold it to it, so that it's they came back. It's impossible to determine who owns it. The current hope is that MGM owns it, and we're trying to get word from them. Yeah, because it we have found the negative. Technicolor actually has the negative. Oh, that's so, great news. Yeah, so uh, I'm hoping to you know get somebody to put that out. I'm also, I've, I've got a screenplay. I, I'm still uh, attempting to work. Uh, I have a screenplay about a, uh, a New York detective who falls in love with a female serial killer uh, called The Love Story that I'm trying to get on. And I've got some very powerful, positive reactions from people, managers and agents uh, on the West Coast. So I'm trying to get that on. Oh, that's admirable. I'm so glad. I was going to ask uh, if you had any projects uh, yeah. in the hopper, as it were, or, you know, because, you know, people sometimes, you know, uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of working, uh, you know, just because I enjoy working. So I get that because uh, yeah. I'm I, I think it uh, is, is engaging to the to the mind and the spirit and it's it's yeah. a good thing health wise and so i that's admirable so i'm glad you're keeping on i hope i hope you get that that project off the ground i'd love to 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 see that um that would be awesome yeah i'm i'm very pleased with it i mean it really came out well and uh i don't know that i'll direct it it's probably mm -hmm. uh too expensive a picture for somebody to put up money it probably it's like twenty five million dollars. I don't know that anybody's going to put that up for an eighty four year old man, but <laughs> I, we can get somebody good to do it, and 
that's what we're working at. Yeah, well, it's I mean, it, it it's your work, so it'll be great to to, to have one of your scripts. Uh, you well, know, unless it isn't. I mean, I've never turned my scripts over to anybody else to direct, so maybe it'll be a <laughs> an extremely unhappy experience. But I'll, I'm willing to take it on. Yeah, well, anything's worth a try at least once, I I suppose. Yeah, uh, I keep hoping that uh, Bang the Drum Slowly will get a Blu-ray release. Speaking of Blu-rays, uh, that is a, a film that's has, in DV has DVD. Been, has it never been released on Blu-ray? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, okay. If it has, uh, I have missed it, or it may, it may have been released over, you know, in a, in the UK or something, but never a domestic Blu-ray re release, and that's right. a. And Paramount's been doing a good job uh, with their archives, so yeah. I'm surprised that they didn't do a 50th last year when it when it uh, celebrated mm -hmm. its birthday. Yeah. So uh, I uh, I know there was uh, the comedian Gilbert Gottfried on his podcast. Uh, he used to quote dialogue from the from that movie, and he would always uh, sing the. Uh, the thing, the hum okay. the theme song, yeah, yeah, yep. and then, so he was he was a tremendous fan of Bang the Drum Slowly, and a lot of uh, and I do too. It's it's a great movie, yeah. and it just yeah. deserves to be seen by people. And I yeah. just think it's a real travesty that it hasn't uh, gotten you know a high definition uh, remaster. So yeah, uh, well maybe it will. I, I I would imagine so. Yeah, and hopefully you'll get asked to do a commentary if it happens. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was fun doing the commentary for for Let's Go Jessica today. Mm -hmm. my, probably my best friend is the producer Bill Bottolato, and he was the line producer on that. Oh, and great! So we we did a a joint commentary on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, that that's a good looking transfer, and I was so glad because it was uh, so hard to. To find, I mean, well, the DVD had gone out of print, and I think it was going for exorbitant prices on eBay at one point before oh, really? the uh, Blu-ray came out. So yeah, it was uh, really, you know, there's a, there's definitely a cult uh, who love that film, and so I it's know. yeah, it's it's, shocking to me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's it it must be um, interesting when you when you do a film and you put it out there and just to see whether it lands or not and then you're you know 53 years later you're talking about something that you <laughs> did. Yeah. no it's weird it's very strange i mean uh i i get you know flown places for midnight screenings where of jessica where people turn up in witches outfits and hoodies <laughs> with vampire teeth and i mean it's fun it's a lot of fun yeah, well, that's uh, I, I'm 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 glad that it continues to have an afterlife because uh, it, it it deserves to. It certainly has a, uh, it's it's very atmospheric and well directed by you. So uh, I will well, thank certainly you. Thank say you. that. Yes. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your All time, right. uh, but I certainly appreciate you agreeing to come on and chat about uh, the story behind Jaws too, because okay. uh, a film historian friend of mine uh, he joins me from time. To time, and he had suggested that we do something about Jaws too, and we had talked about your you know, the problems that you had had, and I said, why don't I just reach out to Mr. Hancock and see if he can tell sure. his version of the story? <laughs> so, well, I'm glad. Okay, I've enjoyed talking to you. Yes, to, yeah, best to you. Same to you. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.